Welcome to this lecture on ROS2 launch files for executing multiple nodes and launching complex systems. In this lecture, we will explore the crucial role of launch files in efficiently managing the execution of multiple ROS2 nodes with a single command. As you may recall from the previous lectures using the Turtle Seam Motion application, we had to execute each node separately in its own terminal, which quickly becomes tedious when dealing with multiple nodes. Such as, for example, in typical ROS2 applications, we may have up to 10 nodes. For example, a robot node may be required for initialization. This is what we call usually the bring up node, uh, while others could handle cameras in order to get the camera frames. Some other nodes should handle the laser scanners or navigation, among other tasks. So manually executing each node in a separate terminal can quickly become cumbersome. This is where launch files come to our rescue as they help overcome this issue by simplifying the process, as we will illustrate in this lecture. So our primary focus will be on understanding the fundamental of creating and utilizing launch files to orchestrate the execution of multiple nodes and processes, ensuring seamless integration within your robotic projects. As we progress through this lecture, we will delve into various aspects of the launch files, from their basic structure and syntax to more advanced concepts like parameterization and conditional launching. You will learn how to build a launch file from scratch, tailor it to your specific needs, and deploy it efficiently to manage a complex ROS2 system. By the end of this lecture, you will have gained a solid foundation in working with ROS2 launch files, enabling you to create, modify, and optimize your own launch configurations. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started now with creating launch files. Uh, so you have to know that if you create a launch file in Python or in C++, it will be in uh, different ways. So let's get started with Python. So in principle, if you have a Python package, you will have the following structure. So assume that you are in the SRC folder, and this is the name of the package inside the SRC folder. And inside the SRC folder, we're going to create a launch folder. So this is where we are going to put all our launch files. So in addition to this, we need to configure the setup.py. And this is in order for the Colcon build to find the launch files. We need to inform the Python setup tools here, setup.py, about the uh, configuration of the launch files. And this, this is going to be in a particular. So this is actually the structure of uh, the setup.py. And inside setup.py, we're going to define uh, data files as a list. So the data file parameter in the setup.py should include the path to the shell folder and also the package name to specify the location of the launch file. We're going to use also a regular expression to specify which file extensions are to be considered as launch files because usually the file extension could be uh, .launch or .launch.py or .launch.xml or .xml. So this regular expression is going to cover all the different possibilities about how we can write the launch files. I'm going to explain this in detail in the demonstration, but this just to give you a brief flavor about the configuration of launch files in Python. And so uh, by doing this configuration, this will allow the Colcon to find and execute the launch files in the Python packages. And uh, this provides a professional and easy to follow method for setting up the Python packages for big ROS2 projects. So as already mentioned, the launch file will allow you to run multiple files at the same time. In C++, it's uh, different. In this case, we're going to need to adjust the cmakelist.txt by adding uh, the following instructions. Okay, so here we're going to uh, use the install command in the cmake directive that specify how to install various components uh, of the package. And in this particular case, we're going to specify how to install the launch files. And the destination keyword here, it indicates that we want to install the content of a directory. And in this case, it will be the launch directory. And finally, the destination keyword specify the target location for the installed files. In our example, the launch files will be installed in a share slash project name. So where the project name is a CMake variable that represent the name of the current project, which means the name of the current package. So let's consider a simple example where we have just two nodes. If you remember, we have already uh, run the, the node, the turtle seam node using the command ROS2 run turtle seam, turtle seam node. And also we have developed the mover node, 
which we have used the command rust to run rust to python uh, rust to motion python and also we have already developed the mover node and in order to execute it we use the command rust to run rust to motion python mover now if we have another node to open we need to open another terminal and write the node so imagine that you have four nodes six nodes to open it's going to be very cumbersome as you have already observed so what we want to do we want to use a launch file to group or to gather all these nodes together so that i can use rust to launch and i call the launch file in order to execute all these nodes at once i don't need to write in different terminals rust to run here and rust to run here uh, is going to be very cumbersome as the rust to project become bigger in scale so same thing we have also developed the cleaner node so I'm going to show you how we can define launch files in order to start multiple nodes at the same time. So let's get started. So you have to note that uh, launch files in ROS2 can be written in different formats, which include the XML format, the YAML format, and the Python format. So the XML format, this is the legacy structure as with ROS1. So if you are already a ROS1 user, you should be very familiar. There is uh, almost no change with the ROS1 XML launch file structure. So we're going to create an XML file. It starts by launch command. Okay, and here this is the closing of the launch command tag. And we can define as many nodes as we want to execute. So for example, here we define the first node, which is from the package turtle sim. So remember here, we're going to use the package name and the node name. Okay, so the package name is turtle sim and the node name is turtle sim node, which we put here in the exec attribute. And you're going to specify a name for this uh, node, uh, which we call TS for turtle sim. You can put any variable. So this will represent the name of your node uh, that you want it when it is executed. Uh, so the second node here, it, it's going to be uh, the cleaner node, or it can be also the mover node, as you will see in the demonstration. And here we specify the name of the package, ROS2 motion Python. So this is the name of the package, as you can see, ROS2 motion Python. And this is the name of the node we specify here. Uh, this is the name that I want to attribute to this executable and output equal to screen. It means I would like to see the output uh, if there is any print method so I can see the output on the screen. If, uh, if we don't put output screen, so it's not going to show any output if any uh, printed uh, command uh, are executed inside this node. Okay, so now another thing that you uh, pay attention to is the naming of the launch uh, of the launch file. So the name of the launch file, it can be just clean.xml. Okay, it can also be clean.yaml or clean.py. Or a better convention is to write clean.launch.xml. Okay, and of course, in the setup.py, as already mentioned, we need to include both formats. I'm going to show you this in demonstration in a while. So clean.launch.xml, this is better why? Because we know in advance that this is a launch file. Because an XML file, it can be a launch file or a different type of files. So I really prefer to always use the prefix launch before .xml or .yaml or .python in order to have a better understanding of that this is this refers to a launch file, not to a more general XML file. Uh, so yeah, it's the same content here. It's the only difference is in the naming. So this is how we create an XML launch file in ROS2. Uh, of course, now uh, you need to make sure that these naming conventions are included into the uh, setup.py. So coming back to the setup.py, so this was the default instruction that we have seen before, which is this one. Okay, if you remember, launch slash launch dot uh, PYX. And so this is a regular expression. So here we need to modify the regular expression so that it also includes the dot launch before dot py or dot XML or dot YAML. So if you use only this one, this regular expression, you will only be allowed to use clean.xml. So the clean.launch.xml will not be recognized. Uh, and I will show you this in demonstration. So in order to also recognize .launch.xml.launch.py, we need to use this regular expression, okay? os.path.join, and here we use the regular expression in order to uh, recognize these two different naming convention, clean.xml, clean.launch.xml. So clean, this is something like, it's mentioned by a star, Okay, so we can have star.xml or star.launch.xml or .py or .python. And of course, here in the package.xml, you need to make sure you have uh, an execution dependency of the ROS2 launch. Now, let's move at uh, the second format, which is the YAML 
launch files. So it's basically the same structure, but it's written in YAML. So here the name is clean.launch.yaml. It's also possible to call it clean.yaml. That's fine. And uh, we start a launch file. Here we have two nodes, as you can see. Of course, the YAML file have some well-identified uh, or well-specified indentation. Uh, so this is the package name turtle seam, the executable is turtle seam node, the name is seam and the namespace turtle seam one. We can also add a namespace in the XML. Uh, and this is the second node, ROS2 motion python. Uh, the executable is a cleaner and I will assign the name cleaner and output screen. So this, it's almost the same, uh, it's, it's exactly the same as this, but what makes the difference is only the format here, it's in YAML and both are recognized by the ROS2 ecosystem. So of course, now this is the configuration. We'll also include uh, launch.yaml or uh, so the file name.launch.yaml or the file name.yaml, both are possible. And make sure also to have an execution dependency as I already explained. So the last one, which is now the novelty in ROS2 is to allow to have Python files as launch files. Uh, this was not the case in ROS1. And this actually gives a lot more flexibility because we, we can use all the Python capability programming language capability in order to program advanced logic, especially for ROS2 complex uh, systems, robotic systems. So again, this is a very, uh, the same very simple example where we're going to have uh, uh, the name of the file. So this is a very simple example called clean.launch.py. So here we have the py extension. We can also call it clean.py. And here we need to do some imports, launch description. Okay, and also uh, we import the node. Uh, the node for uh, the description of uh, the nodes that will be started in this launch file. And uh, we will define a method that is called def generate launch description. So this is a standard method and it will return a launch description. So this is the description of the launch file. It contains two nodes. So the first node has the argument package equal turtle seam, executable turtle seam node, and the name is equal to seam. And the second node, and here you can see it's a list it's a list of nodes. Okay, so large description will take a list of nodes and here you will provide the specification of each node. Okay, so this, this is the turtle seam node and the second one is the cleaner node in the package ROS2 motion Python. Okay, so in this case, it will know that it has to execute these two nodes at the same time. Okay, so these are the three different configurations and of course, we need to make sure that we have this, this regular expression that covers both extensions clean.launch.py and clean.py. And that's pretty much it. So the last thing to introduce here is the conditional launching, uh, the conditional launching. It's possible to define some, uh, for example, Boolean variables or some kind of conditions uh, to tell whether you want to execute a particular node or not. So for example, in this launch file, I would like to execute the turtle seam node and I execute the cleaner node or the mover node only if I allow this through a Boolean variable. So here I'm going to define a Boolean variable start mover. And for this, we need to use a launch configuration object. Okay, so we're going to import a launch configuration object. This is new as compared to the previous example. And I will define this variable. And this variable here, if you can see down below, declare launch argument, it will be set to false by default. And if it is set to false, uh, in this case, I will not start the mover node. So start mover, when it is false, the mover node should not be started. So what we should do here in the node argument, I'm going to add a condition. So condition is a possible argument in the node, in the node object. And you can make an if condition launch argument. So this will, what will happen? So it will look at the start mover. If it is true, it will execute it. If it is false, it will not execute it. So look here. I didn't put any condition for the node turtle seam, so the node turtle seam will always be executed anyway. Whatever the value of start mover is false or true, this turtle seam node is going to be executed. However, this mover node, it will not be executed only if the start mover is equal to false. And by default, uh, uh, sorry, it's equal to true. By default, it's equal to false here. Uh, there is if condition and there is also the unless condition. So the unless condition is just the opposite. Okay, unless condition, if it is false, it will be executed. If it is true, it will not be executed. But here, the logic that I want to establish is the, if it is true, the mover node will be executed. So we can do the same also with XML and YAML. Uh, so uh, here, for, when you define a node, for example, ROS2 motion mover, uh, we can add if statement. 
inside the node uh, inside the node tag we can add an if statement and we will make a reference to the start mover variable which will be defined as an argument on the top of the launch file so we define a new argument that is called start mover and the default value will be equal to false okay so if the start mover will be equal to true this node will be executed if it is just false it will not be executed we can use also unless okay to have the opposite condition so for example if i execute this launch file with default uh, with the start mover equal to false what will happen the turtle sim will be executed and the mover node will not be executed so if i specify the start mover to be false uh, sorry if i specify the start mover to be true in this case the mover uh, the mover node will be executed and the turtle sim node will not be executed because here it has the unless condition and this is the same logic using a conditional launching yaml file okay so we define an argument here the name of the argument and the default value and finally we can use if or unless to prevent or to allow nodes to execute based on the value of the argument start mover i have now introduced the general concept and foundation of launch file in rust2 so now let's see this in demonstration okay so let's see how launch file works in practice i'm going to start by executing the simple turtle sim motion node that we have developed before earlier which uh, basically sets a linear speed and angular speed to make the turtle sim robot move and uh, i'm going now to try to uh, run the, the node so i'm going to first run the turtle sim node ros to run turtle sim node and here the the mover node ros to run ros to motion python mover and we can see that the turtle sim is going to start to move and observe here that i had to open the two nodes in two different terminals of course this is a simple example but imagine that you need to run four nodes five nodes six nodes or even more 